Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a question from the IB Chemistry Paper 1 HL from the May 2017 batch. And this is from Time Zone 1. Now, in this they have asked us, in the electrolysis of aqueous potassium nitrate, KNO3, using inert electrodes, 0.1 mole of a gas was formed at the cathode, which is the negative electrode, which is correct. And then they have given us these four options where they have told us about the gaseous product at the anode and the amount of product produced at the anode in moles. <clears throat> now, first things first, what do we really do in electrolysis? In electrolysis, the setup looks something like this. We have a container. In this case, we have aqueous potassium nitrate. So basically this solution contains KNO3 plus H2O. That is what the solution, whenever there's an aqueous sign, that means that H2O or water is also present. And then you have these two electrodes, they are inert electrodes. Inert electrodes basically means that these electrodes do not participate in any reaction that happens, they're inert. They don't really take part in what's, what's going on, they don't really care. And then over here, typically you have a battery of some sort. And this battery produces energy, which will go and split whatever substance exists in this liquid. So it'll split the substance using electri electricity or energy, which is produced using the battery. And that's why it's called electrolysis. So electro obviously referring to the source of energy, which is electricity of some, of some sort, and lysis, which means the breaking apart of elements. So when we turn on this battery, it's going to send a current or some sort of energy through this liquid via the electrodes. And this KNO3 is going to split into K plus and NO3 minus. So it's going to literally separate the molecule, this electrolysis. And why do we do this? Well, there are a number of reasons. We do it to obtain materials. So example, you want, you want to get silver. You have, you have AG or uh, you have AgNO3, right? Supposing you have, uh, you have silver nitrate and you want to get just silver. You want to take that silver and you can sell it. You know, it's, it's worth a lot of money. If that's what you want to do, then you can use such a process to separate the, uh, the, the molecule into its uh, constituent elements or compounds. So there are a number of uses for electrolysis. You can even use it to clean water. There's so many uses, um, but well, that's all you have to know for this, for, for the sake of this video. So KNO3 splits into K plus and NO3 minus. You can, and if you want to know how you split it, you split it into one positive and one negative ion or ionic compound. So if it's KNO3, the K is the positive and NO3 is the minus. Supposing if it is something like, um, if it's H to SO4, you split it into SO4 to minus, and you split it into H plus. That's how it's done. So it's one positive, one negative. Anyways, so we made, we, we, we've said that we split KNO3 into K plus and NO3 minus using the power of electricity. But remember, there's also in this solution over here, water also exists. So when we run a current through this solution, we're not only splitting KNO3, we are also splitting water. So just give me a second, let me move this over here. So when we split KNO3 minus, KNO3, sorry, we also split water. So water also breaks apart into H plus and OH minus. Now you can see that we have two positive ions and two negative compounds or ions, <clears throat> K plus, H plus, and NO3 minus and OH minus. Now, we need to decide which of these gets reduced and which of these gets oxidized. Now, we know that reduction is the gain of electrons, whereas oxidation is the loss of electrons. Now, out of, out of this, which do you think, which set or which group of compounds is viable for 
oxidation and which is viable for reduction? Well, <clears throat> you would have guessed it. The positive ions are viable for reduction because, well, they're positive. They need electrons, right? You can give these guys electrons because they are missing one electron or two electrons, depending on the charge. And for oxidation, these guys are viable. They can lose electrons because, well, you can see that they clearly have a surplus of electrons. They have a negative charge. But now the real trick, the tricky part in this is to determine out of H plus and K plus, which is going to get reduced and out of OH minus and NO3 minus, which is going to get oxidized. Now, from the oxidation of these, remember oxidation is a loss of electrons, from the oxidation of one of these substances, will the reduction of one of these substances happen? Because whichever electrons these guys give away, those electrons are going to be consumed by one of these guys. So we have to first decide out of these two, NO3 minus and OH minus, who is going to undergo oxidation? And remember, oxidation happens at the anode. So they've already told us in the question that 0.1 mole of a gas was formed at the cathode. So the cathode is where this is, is where this, this reaction is going to take place. And from this, you can probably guess that H plus is going to be reduced because they've told us that a gas has been formed. And that only means that hydrogen was reduced. And by the chemical reaction, what I mean is that 2H plus gained two electrons to form H2 gas. Well, why wasn't it K plus? Because if K plus did get reduced, its reaction would look something like this. And this would not be gaseous, it would be solid. Sorry, it would be solid because this is a metal. Remember, potassium is a group one metal and most of the times their standard state is a solid. So it's very, very, it just doesn't make sense that a gas of potassium would be formed. So from that, we can automatically deduce that hydrogen was reduced. All we need to do is decide out of these two, who's going to get oxidized. Now, from the options that we are given, the first thing that we can do is we can eliminate A and C. Why? Because they say that the gaseous product at the anode is hydrogen. And we know that this is not true because the gaseous product was hydrogen at the cathode, not the anode, because cathode is where reduction happens and reduction is the gain of electrons. So 2H plus gain two electrons to form H2 gas. Now, that happens at the cathode. So in the options where they say that hydrogen is produced at the anode, that's completely wrong. That doesn't happen. So we can eliminate A and C. Now we're left with B and D. They are, they're telling us that the gaseous product, both of these options have listed their gaseous product as oxygen. And if you see this, it's not possible for NO3 to oxidize and produce oxygen gas. That just doesn't work. And in addition to this, it's not possible for this substance, NO3 minus, to be further oxidized. Because if you look at the oxidation state of each of these atoms, nitrogen is already at plus five. And oxygen, because there are three oxygen molecules, each oxygen has an oxidation state of negative two, and there are three of them. So overall, it's negative six. But nit nitrogen, which in this case, we assume to be giving the electrons, is already at its max oxidation state, plus five, that's its maximum. It can't give any more electrons. So NO3 minus cannot be oxidized in this case. It cannot give any more electrons, so it's automatically out. And it is, only, now we're only left with OH minus. So we know that OH minus is going to be the substance which gets oxidized. Now, obviously you don't have your data booklet with you. If you had your data booklet with you, things would be very easy. You would know how many moles of oxygen is produced at the anode, but unfortunately you don't. And this is where I say that you should, at least you should memorize the formula for the reduction of hydrogen and the oxidation of OH minus. So if you haven't memorized it, I would suggest you do it before you go into the exam. The oxidation of OH minus looks something like this. So 2OH minus 
produces H2O plus two electrons plus one half moles of oxygen gas. Now I haven't written this, the symbols, the state symbols, but do remember to write that if you do if you are doing it in the exam. But anyways, as you can see, the two OH minus it gets oxidized, it forms water, it gives off two electrons, and it forms half a mole of oxygen gas. Then these two electrons over here are used by two H plus from this. The two H plus take up or consume the two electrons produced by two OH minus, and they form H two gas. So this happens at the anode and this happens at the cathode. Now, if you see, they have told us in the question that 0.1 mole of hydrogen gas was produced. And as you see the relationship between H2 gas and the production of oxygen, for every one mole of H2 gas produced, it requires two electrons and two OH minus provides two electrons and half a mole of oxygen gas. So this basically says for every one mole of hydrogen gas produced, half a mole of oxygen gas will be produced. Hopefully you can see the relationship over here. So when they say that 0.1 mole gas of, was formed at the cathode and we know that the gas is hydrogen, we can automatically deduce that half of that will be produced at the anode and that will be oxygen gas. So 0.1 divided by two is 0.05. So we can eliminate option D and B is our correct answer. Oxygen is produced at the anode and the no amount in moles is 0.05. Now I know this can be a bit tricky, but you just have to really, if you memorize these two equations over here, if you memorize both of them, it should be really simple for you. So just memorize that and well, the rest is cake. So hopefully I've helped you with that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to message me on my social media, send me an email or put it in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video with another question. Take care.